given that there's no chapter release this week, I thought it was a great idea to do a general review slash analysis of the Egghead arc, especially considering we probably only have a couple chapters left until it wraps up. So to guide my discussion slash analysis slash review, I'm going to utilize this dashboard here. Um, first, we're going to start with some general stats around the arc, and then we'll dig into some of the key topics that define what really happens in Ed Egghead. Okay, so starting off with general stat, it sounds kind of crazy, time really flies, but Egghead has been running now for almost two years. It started in August of 2022, which we could see here, we see the year 2022, and then the first chapter being New Emperors, which debuted August 29th, 2022. Um, up top, we have a kind of summary of the number of chapters, which is 64, and the number of characters that appeared, which is over 500, uh, which is a common theme amongst One Piece arcs, is many characters, or just One Piece in general. Interestingly, out of the characters, we debuted roughly 76 new characters. I say roughly because the way I'm calculating new appearances may include some groups and islands in general, but I would say it's around 76, 75, 70-ish. And we have uh, over 400 recurring characters, meaning these are characters that appeared in previous arcs that show back up. So let's touch on some of the new characters that we get introduced to. You can click up here. The dashboard would filter accordingly. Um, so a lot of these groups, right, are going to be the actual Vegapunks. So we see Atlas, Egghead, Lilith, Edison, York, Shaka, the group SSG, which kind of defines those whole groups, and the Pacifista as well. Uh, Pythagoras, we get introduced to the strongest form of humanity, which are the various uh, Seraphim, in particular, Esper, S Snake, S Hawk, S Shark. Those are the more prominent ones. Also associated with Egghead and the Island is Emmett. So we get introduced to Emmett, which is the Iron Giant. And then um, we have some other interesting things. So we have uh, characters that are associated with the world government. Many vast admirals. So that's Vice Admiral Dahl, uh, Vice Admiral Bluegrass. I think Pomsky is also a Vice Admiral, um, Vice Admiral Hound, a lot of like dog theme named for some reason. Uh, we get first name introductions being Connie, that's a character associated in the Kuma flashback, Alpha, which is Khalifa's biological sister, but they don't really know that they're sister. The name of Nefertari D. Lily. Uh, we get names of the imposters. Yeah, I would say, you know, that kind of, the main new characters that we get introduced are the Vegapunks and many other Vice Admirals and then also characters uh, that pertain to the flashback. Now, we already identified uh, how long the arc has been going on in the various chapters, so the kind of next way we can approach this kind of review slash analysis is to touch on some of the key topics. And the way I've done the key topics is I've actually used a machine learning algorithm called topic modeling. What topic modeling does is take various text and pull out the different topics. So your next question is, okay, well, what text are you using to pull out those topics? And the text that I've actually used is the chapter summaries. So if you go and look on the Wikipedia page after all the chapter comes out, there is a long form summary. What I did was using web scraping, I went and I scraped the long form summary for those chapters. I pushed those chapters into the SQL database and then I ran the machine learning algorithm on the chapter summary and what the output of that algorithm is are groups of words that define a topic and they have various importance. Um, and so I have that up here in the arc key topics. I had done it for all the bear, all the One Piece arcs, uh, but we'll focus on the Egghead. Okay, so let's look at the first key topic for Egghead, 
Uh, Python starts with 0 being the first number, that's why this is shown as 0. And then I will unhide it. And so we can see, right, um, here's our first group or key topic. It includes Vegapunk, Shaka, Luchi, Luffy, Seraphim, Shark, and Sentamaro. And so when we think about how Egghead actually kicked off, right, um, after the Straw Hats got to the island, the main kind of story development was the arrival of CP0 and their mission to assassinate uh, Vegapunk. And so we can see that with Vegapunk and Shaka, they were kind of the most prominent Vegapunks in the beginning. Shaka was doing a lot of uh, storytelling and lore dropping about the ancient kingdom and why the he they believe that their life was under threat. We actually see him talking to Dragon in the beginning. The you know Luchi representing the CP Zero showing up. Some cool scenes with them, and then ultimately we get Sentumaru. Uh, Sentumaru, who was a victim of Luchi, uh, even though he has great hockey, he couldn't stop it. So yeah, that's the first major topic. I thought. I think a general community consensus around that point in time was Egghead is very exciting, right? Egghead was... This was a great way to start off an arc, and I thought... I don't know how many other One Piece arcs kind of, like, get right into it right in the beginning. Even when you're watching it from the anime perspective, like, it feels like Egghead started at a very, very quick pace, which is generally pretty enjoyable. Moving on to the next topic, right? We go to topic one which is the second in order we have kuma bonnie Ginny, dragon saturn vegapunk and beckery six out of those seven words jump out to you right away um let's tackle beckery but you could probably search for him All right he kind of only has appeared in two chapters king beckery was the king of the Sorbet Kingdom, which is where Kuma uh, lived out his pacifist life, then you can see the chapters that he appeared in are pretty defining of um, what occurred, Guinea and, you know, pacifist. Uh, and so he was the one causing havoc in Sorbet, and essentially his actions are what gave Kuma the name Tyrant Kuma. Um, yeah, but that's who Beckery is if you forgot about his name because I definitely did and then we can touch on the other kind of keywords in the topic and their association is primarily the revolutionary army which we got exposition during Kuma's flashback um, the most important word here you can see is Kuma followed by Bonnie followed by Guinea of course we learn about Kuma and Guinea's relationship uh, on during the flashback on the events that happened at God's Valley, they were both slaves. Uh, I think this part of Egghead is probably um, what really like captivated fans because it took a different tone than what you usually see in a One Piece arc. It was very dark, uh, kind of remind you of the um, the bad times on Wano where you learn about why everybody laughs but this seemed much more extreme and we actually got a chapter uh that oda was unable to finish the manuscript there's one of the more um, darker kind of theme chapters but yeah so this group main association basically the events that happened at god valley where kuma got his devil fruit we learned that he's a buccaneer um saturn played a role in that of course with his natural disdain for humans which he often refers to as insects uh eventually Kuma and Guinea are able to escape along with another character that will show up. Um, they go on to join the Revolutionary Army, which is where their association with Dragon occurs. And then Guinea is ultimately captured um, due to a Celestial Dragon having an eye for her. Uh, she has a child uh, named Bonnie. We learn that Bonnie has blue scales, and so their association with Vegapunk is brought to the forefront. Vegapunk helped cure Bonnie at the expense of Kuma's humanity. Now we'll move on to uh, the third topic. So the third topic actually takes place on Hachinoso, also known as Pirate Iron. Um, this is where Garp goes to support Groose and 
Helmeppo as well as Hibari and some other marine associates, right, uh, to rescue Kobe. Now, Kobe is the favorite protege of Garp currently because of Kuzan's uh, defection from the Admiral. We get a little bit of a flashback of Kuzan training under Garp, punching the marine battleships to, 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 to kind of like develop their hockey and such. Some great feats by Garp, the Galactic Impact, and then we also have one by Kobe. I forget the name, it's something Impact, but it's uh, a lot more zestier than uh, Garp's attack. Pizarro, the Blackbeard Pirates, uh, didn't have the best showing, really kind of got saved by Kuzan, but yeah, that is what this second topic is, and that's about to kick off in the anime, which is pretty exciting. Moving on to the third top, fourth topic. So the fourth topic we have here is uh, Sabo, Cobra, Emu, Vivi, Charlos, Lily, and Wapo. Wapo. So this also another uh, major event that takes place outside of Egghead Island and really is about the, learning the truth behind the assassination of Cobra. We get the revelation of Nefertari D. Lily and that the uh, Nefertari family also shares the D moniker. We learn some triggering points about Emu and we get silhouettes of what the Garose are. Wapo here is very important in helping Vivi escape. Um, she was taken hostage by CP0, but Wapo, uh, after seeing the events that happened to Cobra, runs away and Vivi's able to escape in his mouth. And then, of course, here Sabo is telling the truth to the Revolutionary Army, where there's some additional in information about Emu dropped, being the, that he's from the, the Rona family, and, you know, the potential uh, use of the immortality surgery from the Opi Opi no Mi is connected to him and so the revolutionary is starting to gain context and we learn the truth of the assassination of Cobra. And so the next topic is defined by Marcus Mars, Luffy, the Giants, Warkery, Jupiter, and Broadcast. Essentially what this is is the urgency from the Celestial Dragons after Vegapunk's broadcast starts due to his heart monitor kind of triggering it. So we know that the Garose, the planets align on Egghead. We get a revelation of their various uh, yokai forms because they're not debuted as being fruit users, indicating that they are either the pride initiator of those particular forms and most likely not human. And that has spurred a lot of uh, theorizing about them being part of Emu in some way, shape, or form. And so, um, Marcus Mars, I think he plays a heightened role because he is the one that uncovers uh, Punk Records being Vega Punk's brain. Um, he's a little bit more active in trying to dismantle the, the broadcast itself. He's kind of tasked with that. The other Garose are doing things. Ethan is out there uh, immobilizing the pacifistas. Um, and then Warkery is and Jupiter are kind of the main um, combatants against Luffy and the Giants. Now, a continuation of that is the next topic, which really details part of the message of the broadcast. So we see the word message, Dr. Vegapunk being the, the, the largest and a key word, word being the world, right? So the message is being delivered to the people of the world by Dr. Vegapunk. Uh, key themes are around Joy Boy and the Ancient Kingdom. We also get some uh, world context about the earthquakes and the rising sea level. We learn about the Mother Flame. The Mother Flame being uh, an almost infinite energy source which was stolen, a fragment having been stolen from Vegapunk and used to power an ancient weapon which wiped Lusia Kingdom off the map of the earth and triggered said earthquakes and contributing to the rising sea level. Again, the message being delayed to the people of the world. Um, we'll see what side they take and what actions they take, but the message essentially is what is going to dictate the uh, final actions of many stakeholders due to its warning about the rising sea level and the call to action to find the One Piece because whoever finds the One Piece will be able to deliver the truth of the world. The next topic is our fourth 
chain of events happening outside of Egghead, and that is understanding the development of the Cross Guild. We learn that um, Buggity Clown, Crocodile, Mihawk have come together to form what is known as Cross Guild, and Cross Guild is their main um, scheme is to put bounties on Marines, which Sengoku uh, talks about. Moving on to our eighth topic, uh, list consists of Saturn, Kizuru, Luffy, Dr. Vegapunk, Bonnie, and Sanji. And so at this point, this topic is really representing Kizuru having infiltrated um, Egghead and really moving forward with the plan to assassinate Dr. Vegapunk. Saturn's role is, is shown to be a lot more premeditated than expected regarding the events from Kuma's flashback. Uh, and then Sanji is involved because he's able to kind of deflect lasers from Kizuru using the power of love when protecting Bonnie. Uh, but yeah, this kind of highlights the start of the main confrontation on Egghead. We also get some insight into the abilities of uh, Saturn, you know, when Bonnie goes and cuts him. Uh, he's able to kind of heal. We also see the eye ability where you can pretty much split people's heads just by making eye contact. And so that's kind of all happening with this main group here. The second and last topic we have is the Blackbeard Pirates, a little bit more on Law, Von Auger. I think Doc is Doc Q, uh, Hancock, Crew, and Close. So this topic isn't as kind of strong, but you can take bits and parts. Uh, some of it. The events that happened on um, Boa Hancock's island with the Black Bear Pirates trying to attack them, and then you know that's followed up by the confrontation with Law. We get some great feats from Bon Auger. We also have him infiltrating into uh, Egghead with Katarina Devon to where they ultimately touch. Uh, Saturn and gain the ability to use his appearance. And the last topic is one of the most recent in the anime and that's the demolition of the Kid Pirates. The Kid Pirates arrived on Elbaf and they thought they were ready to take on their true Emperor target which was Red Hair Shanks. Um, they are swiftly defeated by Shanks due to his enhanced observation hockey which allows him to see the damage that kid would have done and take the appropriate action which is to split bits catch him mid-attack and use an advanced conqueror's hockey attack uh, called Kamusari divine departure uh, which is a blade swipe imbued with conqueror's hockey effectively taking out kid killer most of kids crew in one shot and so the powers are taken out um, yeah, but that conducts my uh, review. Let me know what you guys thought below. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time, tight you well.